Deadpool 2 is finally here, and it left fans with more than just a stitch in their sides, it also left them with a lot of questions. Sure, continuity and logic aren't exactly important in a Deadpool movie, but there are still some questions we'd love to have answered, even if those answers have absolutely no meaning. So grab your stack of X-Force comic books, button up your 501s, and get ready for a bumpy ride, because there's a high wind advisory in effect for the rest of this spoiler-filled look at the biggest unanswered questions in Deadpool 2. Where are the other X-Men? The big house. It's funny that I only ever see two of you. It's almost like the studio couldn't afford another X-Men. Ryan Reynolds and the rest of the Deadpool gang have made a lot of hay over the fact that the only X-Men who appear in the two Deadpool movies are Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead. While it was just a wink and nod one-liner in the first film, this time around, the rest of the team actually makes a hilarious cameo, deliberately avoiding Deadpool because, well, wouldn't you? As funny as that was, though, we have to ask, where exactly are the rest of the X-Men during the climactic final fight against Juggernaut? One of the most dangerous mutant menaces in the world is attacking an orphanage filled with vulnerable mutant children. This is the entire reason the X-Men exist in the first place, and yet the only ones who bother to show up are, you guessed it, Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead, along with her new girlfriend Yukio. What else could possibly be going on that's so important Wolverine, Storm, Beast, and the rest of the team couldn't be bothered to make an appearance? Of course, they aren't quite the same without Hugh Jackman. What happened to the rest of X-Force? Arguably the funniest part in Deadpool 2 is the amazing sequence where the newly formed X-Force tries to parachute down to attack the convoy carrying Russell, only for almost every single one of them to be horribly and hilariously killed off in graphic and preposterous ways. Saddest of all, of course, is the death of gregarious everyman Peter thanks to acid vomit taking out one of his arms, which kinda sucks. Luckily, during the end credits scene, Deadpool uses Cable's time machine to go back in time and change events so Peter is saved. Which begs the question, what happened to the rest of X-Force? Did Deadpool bother to save the lives of the rest of the team he assembled? Or did he only save Peter? We never find out, though his comment about how nobody liked Shatterstar suggests at least one member of the team might not be back for Deadpool 3. What's the deal with Cable? In the comics, Cable has a lot going on. He's actually from our time period, sent to the future to save him from the techno-virus that is slowly turning him into a robot. He's also the son of Cyclops and Jean Grey's evil clone, and usually uses his inherited telepathic and telekinetic abilities to keep the virus in check. Oh, and he comes back from the future to protect the prophesied mutant messiah, Hope, who he adopts as his daughter. I'm Cable, and I'm from the future, and I like blowing up. So, like, is any of that at all happening in the movies? Is he still Scott and Jean's son? Is Hope an adopted mutant messiah? Does he have the technovirus, or is that just a robot arm? Does he have mutant powers? At several points in Deadpool 2, his weapons fly across the room to him. Is that telekinesis, or some kind of technological gadget? In short, we know almost nothing about the movie version of Cable. Here's hoping we get to know a lot more about him in the future, no pun intended. Is Vanessa actually deaf? So, is Vanessa actually the avatar of death? Bear with us on this one. In the first Deadpool film, Wade Wilson has a super healing factor that even kept him from dying when he was stabbed through the brain. It's pretty powerful. But in Deadpool 2, his power levels seem to be cranked up more than a few notches. In fact, he completely blows himself apart in the opening sequence, with his head flying off and all his limbs going every direction, only to get pieced back together. In effect, Deadpool is now immortal, something he mentioned several times in the film, claiming he just can't die. This is actually true in the comics, where Wade falls in love with Death, who takes the form of a beautiful woman. Death has a jealous ex, though, who you might know, Thanos. He curses Deadpool with immortality so that Wade and Death can never be together, only meeting occasionally in brief flashes of the afterlife when he is literally on Death's door, just to be yanked back to life no matter how hard he tries. That sounds a whole lot like the relationship Wade and Vanessa have throughout Deadpool 2, after she is killed in the opening sequence. Sure, he eventually brings her back to life during the end credit sequence, but still we have to wonder if Vanessa is actually Death, which would explain why he can't die, why he sees her when he's close to dying, and even why he got cancer as soon as they started a relationship. Hmm. Will there be a Deadpool 3? 
Finally, the big question on everyone's mind, will there even be a Deadpool 3? With Deadpool 2 set to become another box office smash, it's a no-brainer that the folks at 20th Century Fox would love to make another one. And fans are certainly clamoring for it, but Ryan Reynolds recently told Entertainment Weekly that he's not so sure. Why? Well, for the best of reasons, he's not convinced it would be a good story, saying, in order for Deadpool to function properly within his own universe, you need to take everything away from him. I don't think you can keep doing that. I do see him as being part of X-Force, obviously. I would love to see him in a team-up sort of thing. I just think if you're going to do another Deadpool solo film, you've got to really, like, get that budget down to nothing and just swing for the fences and break all kinds of weird barriers and do stuff that no one else can do. Luckily, there's an X-Force film currently in development, and the end of the film certainly seems to set up a team spin-off. So one way or another, there looks to be more Deadpool in our future, and hopefully more Peter, too. That guy is the best. As it turns out, we are looking for someone with diabetes. Peter's your man. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love, too.